in order to avoid an economic and financial catastrophe. By defaulting, Democrats and Republicans have to agree to raise the debt ceiling by early June. The negotiations are ongoing. There's no agreement. We're still apart. I've done my part. But what if there were options for the White House to go around Congress to avoid a default, even if they're not better ones? If Congress does not address the debt limit, there are no good options the Treasury or the government can use to save us from catastrophe. Any deviations from that path would be highly risky. Highly risky and highly unlikely, but some are really being considered. I think it is worth taking seriously. You know, they're all bad, but how they compare to the badness of default. Here are the three risky, unlikely, but not improbable paths Biden could take to avoid a default. Let's start with the first one, the trillion dollar coin. A bill in the 90s aimed at making it easier to mint commemorative coins technically does say that the Treasury Secretary can mint and issue platinum coins in any denomination. So the thought is, why not mint one for one trillion dollars and then have enough money to not need to take on more debt? I think the platinum coin is the most unlikely. Jason Furman was President Obama's top economist and was at the White House during the first big debt ceiling crisis. I remember in 2011, I read about the platinum coin on a blog post someone sent me. I went to Tim Geithner, who was then Treasury Secretary, just in the hallway before a meeting and said, hey, what do you think of the platinum coin? He's like, the platinum what? And I'm like, oh, the platinum coin. We can mint a platinum coin. He's like, yeah, what are you talking about? That's crazy. The current Treasury Secretary feels similarly. It's really a gimmick. The Treasury also can't just mint the coin and automatically start spending it. They would need money in what is essentially their checking account, which is held at the Federal Reserve. And so you would need them to bring that trillion dollar coin to the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve to accept it, and then credit the government's checking account with a trillion dollars, and then the federal government could use that money. But it's not clear the Federal Reserve would even accept the coin. There are no rabbits to be pulled out of hats here. This only ends with I know you don't like yes or no's, but if you were sent a trillion dollar coin and asked to be, asked to treat it as a trillion dollars, will you treat it as a trillion dollars? That would be a rabbit coming out of a head. The second but slightly more likely option is the Treasury issuing premium bonds. The way the Treasury takes on debt in the first place is by selling bonds. A $1,000 10-year bond with a 3% interest rate, also called a coupon rate, would pay $30 every year for 10 years. So it's really worth $1,300. By the way, these interest payments are one of many government expenses that are due regularly. And if the Treasury doesn't have enough money to pay them, like they say they won't if the debt ceiling isn't raised by the X date around June 1st, that's a default. The world has never doubted that America will pay the principal and interest on its bonds. A default would crack open the foundations upon which our financial system is built. The Treasury auctions off bonds and maybe gets $1,100 for that $1,000 bond. They've brought in an extra $100 in revenue. When the debt ceiling is hit, they aren't allowed to take on new debt by issuing new bonds. But they could reissue bonds. If an old $1,000 bond's term is ending, they could put that bond back up for auction. It's not new debt. But they could reissue with a higher coupon rate, say 10%. Then the bond would be worth $2,000 over 10 years. It could bring in more money at auction to fund the government without technically taking out new debt. Even the proponents of premium bonds would admit that they are a bad idea compared to raising the debt limit. Launching a brand new type of bond that pays a very high coupon payment so it has a lower face value in the middle of a financially turbulent period um, would be a real recipe for a lot of financial market chaos. Now, you do need to compare that chaos to the chaos you would get if you went past the X date and started not paying your obligations. So this becomes a, you know, comparison of different forms of poison. The third and most likely option. You could call it the most likely option, but I'd rather call it the least unlikely option. Okay, the least unlikely option would be to use the 14th Amendment. Article 1 of the Constitution says Congress has the power to pay the debts of the U.S. 
but the 14th Amendment says the validity of the public debt shall not be questioned, which could be interpreted to mean the debt limit itself is unconstitutional. Say, you know what? We can issue whatever debt we want. We're not going to invent some brand new coin. We're not going to invent some brand new type of debt. We're just going to go ahead and continue to issue debt. This is something the White House is really looking into. I've been considering the 14th Amendment. The problem is it would have to be litigated. If you did the, invoke the 14th Amendment and financial markets thought you had a good enough chance of prevailing, they would continue to lend you money. And so you'd be buying yourself time. Um, it might be that the courts supported the theory of the 14th Amendment. The problem is you may not get that outcome. You may get the opposite. And then you're back to the drawing board with having created a bunch of chaos. But even if the 14th Amendment isn't invoked now, it might be for future debt limit battles. I'll be very blunt with you. When we get by this, I'm thinking about taking a look at months down the road is to see whether what the court would say about whether or not the, uh, it does work. Also, one path House Democrats, not the White House, could take is something called a discharge petition. Basically, if Speaker McCarthy refuses to bring a clean debt ceiling raise to the House floor, a majority of members could bring it to the floor after a lengthy process. It's in the works, but many experts say this isn't highly likely either. Discharge petitions rarely succeed, and when they do, working through the process can take more than a month. And we do not have more than a month to resolve this issue. Which is why those in charge of the country's financial system say, There's only one way forward here, and that is for Congress to raise the debt ceiling so that the United States government can pay all of its obligations when due. The only good outcome is one in which Congress act, acts to um, raise the debt ceiling. <laughs> 